Hey, it's great to see you today. It's Monday the 9th of September. Just, I think it is anyway. Um, just had, really had to think about that there. Um, a bit coming at you a little bit later today. Um, decided to get back into, try and get back into really good routine. So I was up early and was praying and reading my Bible. Off to the gym, back here. I've had a shower, so you're okay. You, uh, you, can, you can rest assured about that. So here we are in Ephesians. We're in chapter two. And we're in verse 14 today. And so this is verse 14, so it says, For Christ himself has brought peace to us, united Jews and Gentiles into one people, when in his own body on the cross, he broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. So Christ himself, Jesus himself, Yeshua, salvation, our deliverer, has brought us peace. That is fantastic isn't it that is i mean because one of the things that kind of that really is one of my things really is that uh in this world that we live in you know it says, it says you will have you know you will have trials you will have you will have difficulties you will have problems but the, dif the difference between the christian and the non-christian or really the difference that should be between the christian and the non-christian is that we have the peace of god i know when i spoke at a, a funeral recently for my um uh, Paul's uh, uh, wife's granddad, um, who Paul's my son, his uh, his wife's granddad, and I spoke and and I don't think he was a Christian at all, but I spoke about what we could get and we could you know we we could receive from God is the peace of God, because in John chapter fourteen this is what Jesus said, my peace I give to you, it's a peace not as the world gives, and um, and he also talks about the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. So when we go through the midst of things, when we go through the midst of trials, because good thing, good and bad things happen to Christians and non-Christians alike, you know, and we shouldn't expect bad things to happen to us, but they will. That is that is life. You know, we go through, we go through different difficult situations. We go through illness. We go through times of mourning with some someone who who we care for, someone who one of our family members when they die. We 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 all we all go through these things, but we can have this peace. We should strive, not strive for this peace, but we should ask God for this peace because Christ himself, you know, he is peace. He is, yes, he is love. Yes, he is the light of the world. Yes, he is our deliverer. He is our, he is our friend. He's our saviour. But he, has, he himself has brought us peace. And if you're thinking, well, I, I, I'm lacking peace at the moment, well, the thing to do is actually... Is to, and, and we all do at different times because we look at the situation, we look at the circumstances and we can worry about them. But actually what we need to do is we need to just look to God and ask for his peace to come. So to ask for his peace to come in that situation because Christ himself is, has, brought us, has brought peace to us. He united Jews and Gentiles into one people. When his own body on the cross, he broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. So Jews kind of did kind of separate themselves from from the rest rest of the world. That's what that's what they did. And and in fact, actually, the one of the laws they had was don't intermarry, don't intermarry with Gentiles because they will pull you away from God. They will pull you away from the things of God, and uh, <clears throat> and it was it was given to them as an instruction. And so they kind of built up this wall of hostility. Um, that they and, and they are God's chosen people. There's there's no there's, I've got no reason to doubt that. Uh, we see it right through scripture the jewish nation they are god's people uh, and as christians we are the new new uh, israel but god hasn't forgotten about israel he hasn't forgotten about the the physical people of israel but he has united us into one body when in into one people when on the cross he broke down the wall of hostility that separated us and it's interesting so uh, one of the things which actually was caused me quite a lot of sadness one of the people who was instrumental in me becoming a christian one of these people who um well, you know if you know my testimony you know i met some some christians and i thought you know because i thought christians you couldn't drink you couldn't smoke you couldn't do this, you couldn't do that you couldn't do the other and i met some what i call freaky christians which i've now become one of course um uh, because that's the only way to be uh, to be totally in love with jesus that's the thing to be and um and one of the people who was really instrumental in me coming to faith. And, um, and then 
I met her again on Facebook because uh, they live down in Kent or whatever, and um, and um, basically she just said, oh, um, I, you know, I sort of asked about faith and things, and she said, well, actually, she said, uh, I've become Jewish. I've become a Jew now, you know, and um, and then sadly after that, then she just I stopped hearing from her, and uh, I think she, she she unfriended me and all these kind of things, and this is the thing about where they kind of they separate themselves out. Now, this is, there's a sense where we need to separate ourselves out from the world. We separate ourselves because we're in the world. We're not of the world. We're in the world. We live in it. Um, you, know, our, you know, our body shouldn't be, we shouldn't be tainted, you know, be tainted by the world. But that is an inevitable thing. It's like when you go, like when I, if I'm cooking uh, or if you go into a smoker's house, you come out and your clothes will smell of smoke. Um, but, um, but praise God. Uh, praise God, we can we can we can get rid of that, and and uh, that doesn't affect us. But um, so so she kind of separated herself from there. But in Christ, Christ has united us. Christ has made us one people, the Jewish people, and God's got massive plans for for Israel, and and when He's going to wrap up the world in the last days, and He's got massive plans for us as Christians, born again believers, spirit filled, following following Him, loving Him doing the things that God's called us to do. My heart is that we as a church will be uh, a first century church right now in the 21st century. That is what we should be, what we are um, aiming for us to be. But what we see in Acts is what we see happening in our day and our situation. Yes, it's a different time. Yes, we have a different culture. Yes, we have all the technology and all the different things. The fact that I'm doing this rather than seeing you in person. However, the message remains the same. The power of God is the same. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His power, he said, I've, I've sent the Holy Spirit that you might have power, that we might, you might receive people saved, and you might, Jesus said, do the things that are greater than these things, Jesus said, will you do? And that's been done through the blood of Jesus shed on the cross, where he united us, us with the Jewish people, into one people, and one day he's coming back for his bride. And I thank God for that. And sometimes I hope it would, I wish it would be tomorrow. And other times I think, no, it'd be, it'd be great in, in a few years time. But Jesus is coming back for his bride. Listen, take care. Great. It's great to hear from you and see you. Take care. Have a good day. And I'll see you again tomorrow on Tuesday. Amen.